they were talking about how you have these guys that, that wear their time on the indies as like a badge of honor. And JBL said he didn't think that you should because that just means that you couldn't get to the major leagues, quote unquote, for like 10 years. That's, yeah. And so, well, then I, I think it was Rosenberg that said to him, yeah, but like, what about a guy like Kevin Owens? Like he gets here and he flourishes and it's clear to everybody he should have been here, you know, a long time ago. And JBL's answer to him was, well, yeah, but he got here. So like he's good enough to be here. But that that's not that doesn't address the fact that he was not here for so long, right? And and and, and JBL also used the, the thing like you know we we all you know wondered how good AJ Styles was and he got here and he was but it's like it's all about opportunity you know right it doesn't make a difference it's not and his his analogy was it's like playing in the minor leagues for fifteen years and getting called up that's a totally different thing you're in the minor that's... leagues for fifteen years because you're not good enough right uh, it's not because WWE doesn't deem you good like. Clearly, AJ Styles and Kevin Owens and, and you name a plethora of other guys were good enough to be here. It's all about roster size and getting the actual opportunity. Maybe in like the late 2000s when they weren't so caught up on having a, a Batista and Orton and Cena main eventing every freaking show, uh, they could have uh, got a couple of these guys in here, you know? Yeah. It's, it's total nonsense. If a guy, if one of these guys was in developmental for fucking 10 years, and then he'd be like, oh, he wasn't good enough to come up. Yeah, because that's WWE's conscious decision to be like, he's not ready, he's not good enough. But like, if he's fucking in tna aj styles in tna like you know st- when it started in 02 and he was like the man by like 05 and he was like main event like greatness by 09 you don't get him until 2016 like us but you, you didn't want him then you know what i mean it's right. bullshit. are you trying you know? to tell me that in the mid 2000s like chris masters deserved to be on the main roster more right AJ yeah styles? exactly like yeah like, it's so don't talk don't don't it's a stupid point. That that's JBL just being a company shill saying, "Okay, well, when you get here, you you may no, no." It's because they didn't they weren't provided the opportunity. Now, but even regardless whose fault that is, but even playing the devil's and, advocate and saying, "Okay, so now he's here," but like what? Like what? He wasn't good enough like five years ago, and all of a sudden he just magically got even better. Like it just it just seems he's, just, he's just company was, cocksucking yeah. is what he's doing. Yeah, and and, and <laughs> to Matt and to Matt chagrin, right? How is this all possible? This is Triple H. When Triple H is given the, hey, you know what, you can go out and get these guys, he started signing the Samoa Joes, Kevin Steens, you know, the El Genericos. He started signing all these fucking people. Yeah, Kev- yeah I mean, you know, long or... Daddy, of course, know, talking about Kevin Owens anyway, and Sami Zayn, everybody. Television stream. What? Uh, I, was, I was clarifying that you're talking about Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Yeah, well, he signed them under those names is what I'm saying. I'm trying to shed light on the fact that he signed these guys. I, I love when Denny says, like, well, I just use their legal names. And then he's like, El Generico. No, no, I did, I did. <laughs> he's like, I use their legal government names. No, 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 Whenever he talks about, like, Brian Danielson, for example, he's like, well, that's his government name. But he doesn't call Undertaker Mark Calloway, for example. No, no, no. Well, Mark Calloway didn't wrestle as fucking Mark Calloway, all right? Brian Danielson wrestled as Brian Danielson for 15 fucking years. What I'm saying is... Um, yeah, I didn't say that in this case. I'm saying he signed those guys under those names. I'm just shedding light on the fact that they were those people when he signed them, right? Yeah, you, you can take a fucking drink, right? <laughs> you can take a fucking drink. For all the great so things scary. SmackDown has done since they uh, they they split the brands up, they really have dropped the ball on American Alpha. Big time. Big time. Uh, American Alpha the titles, at the time. They gave the titles too quick, and they didn't do anything with them when they had the titles. They lost them, and now they're just not even they, up on the radar. Yeah, like, they were legitimately my favorite thing in NXT when they were going strong. They, they were my favorite thing in NXT, and they they really dropped the ball on them. And even, like, they, they stopped doing what, what made them special in NXT. Like the, just, like, the little backstage stuff where, you know, like, like, like uh, Jordan says something, like, stupid or whatever, and... and, and, and and Gable is just like you know doing the sick like that's that's sick you know the the little the stupid the, the ready will and Gable do you remember that that talking smack uh, early on in- yeah where JBL was like stop doing that you're the tag team champions it was so awkward so JBL for those who didn't see it at the time told told them to stop doing the ready will and Gable that's like our that's like our catchphrase five times and they were like you could see them it was kind of awkward on the show and they're like oh okay okay. And they stopped doing it ever since that point. It's like, why would you stop doing that? No, don't listen to him. That's your gimmick. And if if you say a, a fucking catchphrase and the whole entire crowd repeats it back to you, then you're doing something right. Yeah. Don't listen to fucking JBL. All right. That was the one. That was one of the dumbest things I've seen since the brand split. That is so stupid. Uh, but JBL. it's little things like that. They just kind of took away their. They stripped away their character, 
and and also the other thing is too. I mean, they've had they've definitely had a few really good matches, but they are they haven't they haven't been put in a spot really, or the, I I don't even know how to word it, but they haven't really been put in a spot to get those fire matches they were having consistently in NXT. And you know they're going to completely disappear when uh when the new day come back, like they're going to be pushed down even further than they were before. Fucking JBL man, he's never had a catchphrase. He's never had a, a catchphrase period, but he's never. Even um, a, I am a wrestling god. I'm a wrestling guy, yeah. yeah. He's never all right. He's never had a baby face catchphrase that people were behind saying. I'm proud to say that I've always hated JBL, no matter what. Me too. Uh, I, I, I never, I, I never I, found him interesting. His heel character, I thought, was bland, and and I never wanted to see him on TV. I, I thought his music when when he was when he was Justin Ock Bradshaw was actually pretty good. I don't even remember it at this point. I had this good like. I'm gonna kick your ass. The JBL gimmick, like I mean, the APA when they were drinking beer and playing cards, like they were cool. I mean, at the time, you know, I'm a teenager and like that was cool. Like, oh, they're drinking beer, smoking cigars, like they're just cool. I never liked them in the ring. And the JBL gimmick was was cool for what it was. You know, it's definitely like hateable. Love to hate it. A lo- yeah, that was for me. That falls in the category. Like a lot of people I know, like love to hate that character. That was the, that falls in like the, the Del Rio character for me, where it's kind of like I just don't want to see you on my TV. But the just- payoff, the payoff to the whole thing ended up sucking. Not n- not against John Cena because at the time, like John Cena was new and and you were kind of with it, you know. Uh, but the match was awful. Like the blow off to that, and like finally, like that character that you love to hate finally getting beat. In that match, that was like ten minutes, and it was terrible. So it was like not even mm. worth it. The whole thing, you know. Let's just shit on JBL this entire show. So I'm watching, uh, watching Talking Smack, and, I, and I, he might have mentioned this. I think he mentioned this somewhere else. Maybe it was during um, Tickets to the Table or whatever the hell it's called. But he's he's spoken a couple times about Jinder Mahal, you know, grabbing that brass ring, and uh, it's like okay, you, you, like you know, you he you talk about he's grabbing the brass ring, you know, he's he in not. that spot now, and it's like. You know, you think back to the Cesaro stuff about grabbing the brass ring and why can't he grab the brass ring? And it's like, again, it's it's not it's plain as day. It's not about grabbing the brass ring. It's about somebody giving you the opportunity right. to take it. He just was suddenly he, he won one and, match and about Jinder Mahal's physique and he got in shape. Like Cesaro is like, what kind of in shape right. does he have to be? No, this guy won one him. match, which he was booked to win, and all of a sudden he's number one contender. And like we're supposed to we're supposed to believe like that's him taking seizing an opportunity. Right, and this is JBL talking kayfabe about... Kayfabe-wise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. kayfabe-wise, yeah. yeah. Of course, this is JBL right. not, not speaking in kayfabe. No, no, yeah, and th- that's not grabbing the... Bra- grabbing the brass ring is you're put out there in some other capacity, not as the fucking main event, not being booked to be in the main event, but whatever you're doing and you deliver and you exceed expectations and people give, a, give you a second look and say... All right, that guy is really um he's out there killing it. He's grabbing the brass ring. He's doing everything. He's exceeding our expectations. We need to give him more. We need to bump him up. That's grabbing the brass ring. Not just being there and then, uh, you know what? Um we're doing a new deal in India and we need some Indian representation, so you're going to be in the main event now. That's not grabbing the brass ring. Right. That's being put in a situation because they need you to be so. So if we if yeah. we had like a, a like a a, mar- a huge market in Switzerland, like that's how you'd get Cesaro. It's no, but it's no knock on Jinder. Like I think Jinder's just okay. He went from terrible to okay, <laughs> but it's no knock on Jinder. Jinder, like you know, more power to him. Like hopefully he makes the best out of the situation they're giving him. But you know, JBL needs to shut the fuck up because uh, it's not like I'm just saying. Well, again, like we, 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 we we've man. got him pegged that he's he's just like a shill. Like he's just gonna he's yeah, gonna be like oh yeah, WWE. It's, it's just really annoying to hear JBL's voice in anything for the WWE. Like. Again, it's not that like you know. Oh, I love to hate JBL. It's like no, just go away. I don't want to see or hear you anymore. Right. And I, 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 I think well, that a lot of people feel the same way. 